Hello, my name is Felipe and I'm a postdoc in the Brazilian Center for Physics Research. I'm here on behalf of the CONI collaboration. I would like to thank the organizers for the opportunity to present the results on coherent elastic neutrino nucleus scattering from the CONI experiment. So the CONI collaboration is uh, comprised of around 30 members from several institutes in Argentina, Brazil, Mexico, Paraguay, Switzerland, and the US. The coherent elastic neutrino nucleus scatterings provide a new window into the low energy neutrino sector, and as such, is a potential probe for new physics. <clears throat> the main goal of the coherent neutrino nucleus interaction experiment, CONI, is to detect sevens in silicon nuclei. And for that, we use scientific CCDs that were created by the LBNL and are also used in other experiments such as dark matter and CCDs experiments in DAMIC. Uh, the mechanism for detection is that the uh, neutrino scatters off on the silicon, nucle uh, silicon nucleus in the CCD. This recoil, the energy uh, momentum transfer generates a recoil and a fraction of this energy is then create, uh, creates ionization in the lattice and the high electric field of the CCD captures this, uh, these electrons and then you can use the, and then the CCD electronics can be used to measure these, uh, these charges. So you achieve thresholds of around 50 electron volts for ionization energy and the ionization energy is related to the recoil energy by the quenching factor. The Kony detector is placed at a 30 meter uh, from the Angra 2 reactor, reactor core in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Here I show the, the estimated neutrino flux coming from the, from the reactor. Uh, this is in, uh, in energy of the neutrino, which needs to be converted for an experiment for the ionization energy, which is a tiny fraction of this. So the most important thing you need to understand from this is that you need very, very low uh, threshold to, to probe the, the high flux part of this, spec of, of this uh, flux spectrum. So the Connie detector was installed in 2014 and then upgraded in 2016. This is how the, the CCD looks like. We stack uh, 10 CCDs in a copper box. Copper box goes into a D-word, which is kept in vacuum. And then you have several layers of shielding for neutrons and gammas. This is a sample of an image. Uh, for a three hour exposure. We can clearly see, uh, identify the tracks by their, by their geometry. The straight lines are very high energy muons, which just punch through all the shielding and also the CCD. Then you have electrons that are produced inside of the shielding and gammas and neutrinos generate a single hit, which we call the fusion hit in the images. Uh, the energy can be calibrated by taking the gammas that are produced by the silicon and the copper, <coughs> the copper from the box and the silicon from the CCD itself, the fluorescence, the fluorescence gammas that are generated by them. And you, can, and you can also use the muons, since they just pass in a straight line, you can use them to calibrate what is, what is the depth because of the nature of the CCD and the thickness of the CCD we're using, we can easily differentiate uh, hits that happen very close to the charge collection region and hits that, that happen in the opposite of the CCD. They generate very different patterns of uh, energy uh, diffusion, energy dispersion, spatially. So if you look at, this is a real uh, muon, you can, uh, correlate what is the depth, the depth of the hit with the dispersion using the muons. And this effectively gives us a three-dimensional estimate of the, of the hit. So you, the results here show the results of 2016 to 2018, our first scientific run. Here are the, the spectra for both the reactor on 
and the reactor off, which is the time that the, the reactor is down for maintenance and upgrades. So the reactor off is only uh, background. Uh, this we already calibrated for energy. So this is the peak corresponding to the silicon uh, fluorescence uh, energy and the two peaks for the copper fluorescence uh, energies. Uh, and this is the plot for the differential rate. So we subtract the, the rate for the reactor on minus the reactor off. This was published in 2019 in this paper. But the most important thing is that we need to compare with the expected rate of neutrinos. And to do that, what we actually do is we have to, uh, we have to compute what is the acceptance and efficiency from our uh, experiment. So we take all the data and we simulate neutrino-like events, very low energies, and we introduce them to the actual images. We take these images and we pass through the whole reconstruction chain. And uh, then we can calculate what is the rate of uh, events that were introduced and then reconstructed. So if you see here above 500 electron volts, you have a plateau and you lose a couple of uh, a couple of simulated events, but mostly because of occupancy, the fact that the image is already uh, full of background events, and also the analysis cut. So actually, uh, you lose a little bit because of the efficiency. But the most important part is the low energy part because this, this is the this is the part that you're going to uh, start probing the high flux of neutrinos and we lose efficiency uh, and uh, acceptance here because the reconstruction starts failing because the, the low energy uh, diffusion hits that simulate neutrinos start getting washed out by the, the, the dark current and also the, the noise. So we take this curve for the acceptance and efficiency and we multiply by the expected neutrino rate to get these uh, two expected rates for the actual measurement. This is using the quenching factor for Lindhardt's and this is Chavarria's. And if you take a look at the numbers here, you see that uh, the two first bins are below 500 electron volts, which is exactly the area that we start losing uh, acceptance. And using the, the differential rate from the previous plot, we reach a, uh, a limit, we place a limit that's 40 times above the standard model, the standard model expected rate for 95 confidence level of our, of our result. With this, we can already apply this to beyond the standard model physics and, and models that uh, introduce new interactions, uh, non-standard neutrino, neutrino interactions, so for instance, uh, this simplified light scalar uh, mediator model with this cross section, we obtain the most stringent limits for low medi mediator masses below 30 MeV. If you see the plot here, below 30 MeV uh, are curves both with Lindhardt and Chavarria's uh, quenching factor. We managed to be, uh, to exclude a region, uh, uh, a more stringent region than the coherent which uses uh, neutrinos from particle accelerators. So this is the first competitive beyond the standard model constraint in sevens uh, for reactors. This is published in this paper here. The same uh, was applied for the, for the vector mediator model. This is the cross section. And again, for energies below 10 MeV, we have the most stringent limits uh, also published in the same paper. So we are aware that the, the noise and the dark current were our, our bottlenecks for the previous analysis. So for the 2019 data, we actually tackled both problems. First, we decreased the exposure time from three hours to one hour. This reduces the dark current. Uh, on the other hand, we changed our data acquisition from reading each pixel to before we uh, 
instead of reading each pixel, we accumulate five pixels and then we read them only once. By doing so, we greatly increase the signal to noise ratio on each of the pixels because each of the, 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 noise, the noise is introduced on each reading. So if you accumulate five and then you read only once, you greatly reduce your noise level. Uh, and here, uh, we performed also a blind analysis. So first, we improved all, all of our algorithms and selection cuts, and we, we performed a very thorough analysis using only the reaction, reactor off data. Then we opened uh, the reactor on data for mid to high energy so we could calibrate for energy and also apply uh, selection cuts on it. And after all of that, we unblinded the, the full data and we uh, uh, compared the, the, we got our result. So here I show the, the stability checks that we performed for the readout and the dark current, both on and off, and also the death calibration stability with muons. So these are the spectra for, uh, for the reactor on and reactor off. Because, the, because of the improvements that we've done with the selection cuts from the, run, the first run and this run, we managed to decrease the rates for low energies, which is really important because now we control better the background. Uh, this is the energy for the silicon uh, fluorescence and the copper fluorescence. We have 1.35 kilogram day uh, for reactor off and 1.52 kilogram day exposure for reactor on. And this is the differential rate. Uh, this is compatible with the result that we had from the previous run. But on the other hand, the most important part is that because we reduced the, the because we uh, managed to reduce the noise and the dark current, we actually uh, manage to have the, the acceptance to plateau at around 100 EV instead of 500 that we had in the previous run. With this, we could probe and take advantage of, of much higher neutrino fluxes uh, from lower energies, which were, we, were, we were discarding because of our acceptance limitations in the previous run. By doing so, we increase in two times the expected neutrino rates and then uh, actually our sensitivity is improved, which uh, I show here in this plot, this, red, this yellow dot here uh, is uh, related to the previous, the, the first run. This is in the engineering run. This is the first scientific run. And this is our run here. So the figure of merit is lower. Uh, and in order to go further and even go probe deeper into lower energies, we uh, have the perspective of installing skipper CCDs, which is a new technology, which can greatly uh, uh, decrease our noise and background and dark current. So we expect an increase up to six fold in the neutrino rate by being able to go deeper in low energies, uh, have better uh, uh, efficiency and acceptance. The threshold, we could drop it to five electron volts. We have, we're gonna have a much better control of the background because we're gonna be able to detang, dis, disentangle that from the noise and dark current. And we're gonna apply, uh, we're gonna understand a lot by applying this new technology to the sea level with the Connie environment. So here in this plot, the black line is the exposure and the confidence level for the situation we have now. And the blue one is using the, the, the skipper technology. This is possible because the skipper technology allows for multiple sampling on the same pixel. And by doing so, you can decrease the, the, the level of noise in the reading just by reading multiple times. So for instance, in the left here, we show the readout noise for the standard CCD that we're using. The noise is around two electrons, so you cannot distinguish uh, how many electrons you actually have. But by uh, using the, the skipper technology, 
you can uh, resample uh, multiple times until you are able to uh, completely distinguish uh, uh, electron individual electrons in the bins in the in the pixels. So you have virtually a hundred percent acceptance. You can detect single electrons. This is a very promising for neutrino and dark matter detection. So in summary, CCDs are promising technologies to observe sevens at low energies. The 2016 to 2018 data allowed us to place the most rigid limits on the understanding model low radiator masses. Uh, we improved our sensitivity with the 2019 data. Uh, our paper regarding that is under preparation. We already started the analysis on the 2020 data and this uh, perspective of using the skipper technologies will greatly reduce the noise and we're gonna have a much better control on the background rate. Thank you very much.